Thomas Brewer decided to recruit his friend and fellow activist Primus Keene to challenge the all-white primary in Muskogee County. On July 4th, 1944, King went to the Muskogee County Courthouse and attempted to vote in the primary election. When he entered the courthouse, a white detective grabbed him and asked him what he was doing. King said he was going in to vote. The detective barked a racial epithet at him and roughly escorted him to the door and out into the street. Shaken but determined to carry out Brewer's plan, King walked three blocks to a white attorney's office, a guy by the name of Oscar Smith, and told him that he wanted to sue the Democratic Party Executive Committee of Muskogee County. At first, the lawyer tried to talk him out of it. He said, do you really want to sue the Democratic Party? Uh, do you know what you're doing? Primus said he did. The attorney filed a lawsuit against the Muskogee County Democratic Party Executive Committee, which was chaired by Joseph Chapman at the time, for denying him the right to vote. Thomas Brewer and others helped raise $10,000 then to pay for this legal challenge. <laughs> Almost immediately, King began receiving regular death threats over the phone. One man threatened to toss him into the Chattahoochee River. King responded to him over the phone, well, they've put so many Negroes in the river for nothing, I'm willing to go in there for something. Arguments in the case, King versus Chapman, began in a federal district court in September 1945. King's attorneys argued that King's right to vote under the 14th, 15th, and 17th Amendments had been violated, and they sued for $5,000 in damages. In October 1945, a federal judge, T. Hoyt Davis, ruled in King's favor, awarding him $100 at 7% interest. He, of course, he wouldn't collect that money until 1977. The defense team appealed the decision, arguing that the Democratic Party Executive Committee was a private entity and could hold elections as they saw fit. The U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans disagreed. In March 1946, Judge Samuel Sibley ruled that the primary was an action by the state and that denying King the vote had violated his constitutional rights. The Muskogee County Democratic Party refused to accept defeat and appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court, but the justices refused to hear the case. King had won, opening the door for African Americans to vote in the Democratic primary election in Columbus and across the state of Georgia. King's brave act that day inspired thousands to register to vote and become involved in a campaign that would culminate 20 years later with the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965.